I want to help you design a shirt. I spend a lot of time actually critiquing your designs with, are your designs any good? And I thought it was about time that I actually created a video helping you with the core principles to actually design a good shirt. I've studied art and photography for so long. And in fact, I've taught art for well over 10 years. And one thing everyone should know is that art is subjective. And what do I mean by that? I mean that one person could absolutely love your design and one person could hate your design. That doesn't mean the design isn't good. It's just subjective. Now, before I go into the core five principles, please hit that like button. Let's try and get this video to 500 likes. It would be really, really cool and it massively helps me. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification so that you know when I bring out new videos. And uh, let's get right into the five core principles. Number one is font. This is much more important than you think. And I'm not just talking about picking a font to match the theme. I'm also talking about the number of fonts you should pick. The amount of designs that I see on a daily basis that have four, five, six, seven different fonts in it is shocking and it's ugly to look at and you just don't want that many fonts going on in one design. You want no more than three different fonts and as well as three fonts you want to make sure that those three fonts actually match the niche for example you wouldn't put this font right this army looking font with this cute dog t-shirt they just don't match so where can you find free commercial fonts that you can put on your designs well this is a question everyone seems to be asking me and you can go to 1001 fonts and they have a whole commercial free commercial rights section the link will be in the description and you know this is the website you just saw so definitely go and check that out if you want to download some free fonts for your t-shirt designs right that's the first thing the second thing is design placement you all know what i'm about to say the design has got to be on the chest not on the belly now, sometimes it's okay to break this rule, but nine times out of 10, it is not okay to break this rule. Likewise, if you're going for a design on the back, it should be between your shoulder blades, not on your lower back, okay? There's specific reasons for this, but just trust me, it makes the shirt look better, it makes more sense, and it's just what's been going on for, like, you know, all time. Okay, now, just a quick little caveat. If your design is big, right? If your design is so big that it stretches from the top all the way down to the bottom, that is okay, right? The only thing that isn't okay is to have a design predominantly on the bottom, right? So you've got here. You don't want the design over here. You want it over here, but it's okay if the design is this entire area, okay? I hope that I hope that makes sense. Number three is graphics. This is a really, really tough one because it's so subjective. Some people absolutely love having these complicated graphics. Some people love having just simple text-based designs. And in fact, the designs that made me the most amount of money were simple text-based designs, but that doesn't mean they're necessarily better. So I'm gonna leave this one up to you here, right? I want you to you know, figure out for yourself if you want to go for that complicated design route or the super simple design, all I'll say is, okay, and something to follow, is don't overcomplicate it for no reason. So once you feel like a design is finished, end it. A lot of people, especially artists, will continue to try and improve a design and improve a design and improve a design, and eventually it just ends up looking worse than it did 10 steps earlier. The point of having graphics there is to help illustrate the overall design. You don't want to have too many graphics or too few graphics. You want to have the perfect amount of graphics that will suit your niche and your design. And, and only you'll be able to decide that, right? When you're looking at it, you'll be able to decide, hmm, is there too many graphics here? Is there not enough graphics here? And you've got to just kind of work it out like that. What I found to be good is to be using place it to actually get graphics and then kind of edit them a bit so that I'm not worried about copyright issues or I'm not worried about someone else having the same graphic as me. Because in my mind, there's two options. One, you can draw the whole thing yourself or two, you can just go and find a ready-made graphic. So finding a ready-made graphic is obviously going to be a lot easier and a lot less time consuming, but I like to go that extra mile and actually edit that 
graphic so that it's kind of like it's just mine and no one else will have it. And when I say edit, I don't mean anything super confusing. I mean changing some colors, maybe, you know, doing a bit of Photoshop work, some manipulation, deleting some things here and there. Nothing crazy, but just so that I know that I am the only one with that design. And just to help illustrate this point that graphics aren't as important as everyone thinks, this is my all time favorite design from my series, Are Your Designs Any Good? I just think it's so perfect. The lack of graphics kind of says so much about it and the simplicity of it is just brilliant. So you can see this literally a bit of text, one image, simple, really, really simple. Right, the fourth core principle is colors. Colors are really important, just like font. You don't want to have a color that doesn't match the overall theme. So like we said with font, you know, with the army and the dog, you don't want colors, you don't want happy colors if the overall theme of the shirt is a sad, depressing shirt. Likewise, you don't want sad, depressing colors, grays and blacks and dark blues, if the overall theme of the shirt is happy and vibrant. Okay, so you've got to make sure you're using color properly. And there's a whole psychological, you know, reasoning behind color and color theory, and there's a lot actually to learn about color, but we're trying to keep this as simple as possible. In terms of how many colors, I like to say three is a good number of colors to actually use. Obviously, you know, sometimes it's okay to break that rule if you're going for an overly vibrant, colorful design, then by all means have more colors. But I think a good rule of thumb is three colors. And not just that, but I wanna quickly say, of my most popular designs, not only were they just basic text-based designs, they were also basic white on black. So the t-shirt was black, the design was white, there was zero colors involved, and they sold like hotcakes. So it just goes to show you don't need to have these ridiculously colorful, crazy designs. Sometimes less is actually more. And of course, it goes without saying, if you are gonna mix colors, make sure that they actually go. You do not wanna have clashing colors on a t-shirt. And what can help with this is just simply going to Google and searching for a color wheel, seeing what colors go with what colors if you don't already know, and trying to work towards that, okay? Don't start putting purple and greens together because they just don't go. The fifth and last core principle is blending. What do I mean by blending? No, I don't mean how colors blend. I mean how the whole shirt blends together. So how colors blend with the design, how colors blend with the niche, how the text blends with the colors, how the text blends with the niche, how everything blends together to create a seamless piece of art that is easy to look at. Because at the end of the day, that is what we're trying to do here. You don't want someone staring at someone else's chest area to try and figure out what the design is. Not only will it look super creepy, but you'll actually come across as a perv, and you don't want that. A good rule of thumb is to show your design to a friend, or to anyone really, and see if they can decipher it in three seconds. See if they can get it in three seconds, right? So when they look at it, one, two, three, ah, I completely understand what's going on there. The reason why I say three seconds is because when you're walking past someone on the street or just in general, right, you might glance over at them and you're probably glancing at them and have them in your peripheral vision for a couple of seconds. You want someone to be able to fully see and understand the design in that quick glance, okay? And if they can't, it's too complicated, okay? And also they might come to just stare, which we've already established is bad. So how can you make sure that you're, you know, working with this blending rule? Well, make sure you're not plonking text over graphics because then the graphics is hard to see and the text is hard to see. And also make sure you're not making the colors hard to see. So don't put a badly colored text on an even worse colored design because then it will be very hard to read that text. Okay, a nice rule of thumb is to have a design and wrap it with text all over the design or to incorporate that design as individual letters on that text. That always works. Think of every single element of that design. Take a step back and look at it and be tough with yourself. Okay, look at it like every section of it. Does that text look good there? Does that graphic make sense there? Is that easily readable down there? Like literally be very, very tough with yourself. And those are my five core principles. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any of your own core principles when it comes to designing. I would love to hear about your design process and things that you follow when you're creating a t-shirt design. So let me know in the comments down below. And of course, I know I've already asked, but please hit that like button, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. So thank you so much for watching.